Jobs. Many Americans, uh, American companies, I should say, are taking a closer look at the impact on employees and customers when it comes to issues of diversity and inclusion. And one organization that's doubling down on its approach to combating racism is Procter & Gamble, this week releasing a video, The Choice, encouraging white Americans to speak up and stand up against racial bias. And the Let's Talk About Bias social experiment fostering conversation about race between strangers. Joining us to talk more about PNG's strategy uh, is Damon Jones, Chief Communications Officer at Procter & Gamble. Damon, good morning to you. Um, good morning. Before we, get into some, before we get into some of the details, just, just tell us how this came about. And I'm curious about what kind of debate there may or may not have been uh, inside the company about how to approach this. Well, for years, we've been using our voice and position as a leading advertiser to spark these constructive conversation on race and unbiased. You know, back in 2014, we launched a campaign called Like a Girl to talk about gender bias. In 2017, we launched a campaign called The Talk that really shined the light on the conversations that black mothers were having with their children to prepare them. Last year, we did a, a campaign called The Look. Uh, and recently with The Choice, we wanted to catalyze even more conversation given all that was happening in the world. Um, so we know that a lot of the core evils that we're facing right now, racism, sexism, xenophobia, they all start with bias. And we can't tackle these problems uh, until we begin to talk about them. So the challenge is always, how do you do that in an accurate way? How do you do that in a way that really brings people voices, but invite them in to really become part of the solution? That's our objective with the Talk About Bias campaign. You know, it's an important message, but we're we're living in contentious uh, times and, and amid what some people might describe as a cancel culture. And I don't know if you remember when Starbucks many years ago uh, put together their Race Together program, which immediately uh, drew criticism, despite I think it's well intentioned. And my, my question to you is how you think about that sort of uh, mix uh, in terms of how you approach this issue and what kind of feedback you've gotten thus far. Sure. Well, I mean, I think what we know, um, because we're all about serving consumers, consumers want to know the values behind the brands that they buy every day. Uh, and as we consider all of these types of programs, we do it in a fair and accurate and a very respectful manner. Um, we're very clear on our goals. Um, we want uh, a society um, that fosters great public discourse, even when we disagree. So we bring multiple views to the table um, and we handle those views in a very respectful way. We're clear on the objectives, we're clear on the outcomes, uh, and we acknowledge that, hey, not everyone's gonna disagree, but we want everyone to come to the table bringing their lived experience, but also bringing uh, perspectives that are beyond their own. So what we did with we'll Talk About Bias is we paired strangers together, right? People who were different, who have different lived experiences, white, black, gay, straight, all these dimensions of diversity, and we just said, let's talk about these things, right? Uh, and sometimes we disagree, sometimes feelings get a little hurt, but that's the proper process of learning. We've actually taken that same process within the walls of PNG, right? So we're walking the talk when it comes to bringing people together and getting through some of those difficult conversations. At the end of the day, it's not about a popularity contest, but it's about getting to uh, the culture uh, of respect uh, and understanding that we all wanna live in. And then the other question I was going to ask is, how do you think about this in terms of branding? I know that may sound crass, but that's uh, there is a branding element to all of this. Um, you know, historically, people uh, so you know, P and G would sell a product. Um, this is selling a brand, and there really is no. I mean, there is an overarching brand, but you have lots of brands underneath the umbrella, if you will. We do well, and, and the answer is it's a little bit of both. There are times when we've chosen. Uh, to speak out using one of our brands, uh, Secret, for an example, is a brand that's been very vocal uh, about gender equality, right? Doing a lot of work with the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team, for an example. There are times when other brands have gotten in. What we've done with Talk About Bias is we've used the, the brand of Procter & Gamble um, because we really want to make sure that that message is clear, that there's not a, an, another uh, distraction. Sometimes people feel that the message is too commercial. People feel like you're doing this to sell soap. Um, that's not why we're doing it. We're doing it because we really want a better society. So those are careful, measured decisions that we take, uh, again, with the goal of making sure that that message can cut through uh, in a very measured, uh, in a very bold way, but in a way that really uh, has the impact of really changing minds, opening hearts, and leading people to action. The other question I was going to ask you, though, has to do with advertising. And I don't, I don't know how much you've been involved with this situation with Facebook and some of the others. How do you think this changes the advertising approach for a big company like yours? Well, I mean, I think we've been clear on the standards of advertising everywhere we want, right? Um, you know, we're not going to step in and advertise where there's hateful, denigrating, or derogatory comment. 
Um, but the higher level objective for us is the accurate and the respectful portrayal of all people. That's a standard that consumers should hold every company to. And that standard should be whether that's in advertising, whether that's in social content, or whether that's in the places where we choose to advertise. So we are seeing lots of consumer interest on that, uh, and we're taking action. We've been really clear on what our standards are. We're applying those standards equally to all of our partners, um, but we think that we are gonna be part of the solution um, by setting the great example that we've been setting, taking action where it's needed, being very clear on the standards, and then walking the talk to make sure that ourselves we're doing uh, the accurate and positive portrayal of people. And when people don't see it, they should hold Procter & Gamble or any other company to account.